John Arroyo joined the elite fighting group, the Green Berets, with an unhealthy craving for the affirmation he never received from his father. He's the survivor of a chaotic childhood that wounded him more than even being shot. April 2nd, 2014, 4 p.m. It's a moment forever etched in the mind of Captain John Arroyo. A Special Forces Green Beret, he was one of many victims in the shooting at Fort Hood. John recovered far better than expected and retired from the Army several years later. But there remained a deep ache in his soul that stemmed not from the shooting or multiple deployments, but from his childhood. In his new book, I Never Heard My Dad Say, John shares the pain of his past and how he was freed from it. All right, everybody, John's with us now. Thank you for being here. Hey, thank you, Andrew. People will remember that shooting now. That news item is probably coming to mind. Yes, I remember the Fort Hood shooting. I mean, do you still live with the horrors of that day, even emotionally? Uh, not so much. I would say probably when another shooting happens, okay. I am affected by, by you know, a couple of hours or maybe even a couple of days, but I don't live with the trauma anymore. So, But what people do need to know is that there's actually two Fort Hood shootings. There was one in 2009 where Dr. Hassan shot 30 people, and then in 2014, I was shot in 2014. And so you worked really hard to overcome what you dealt with physically, from a physical standpoint. But emotionally, as you recovered, you really explored some pain from your childhood that a lot of people don't do when they need to face up to some emotional trauma. Tell us about that journey for you. Well, you know, you, one of the things that you have to do is you have to face your fear and your pain and trauma. And when you do that, when people get broken the way I was broken, what comes to surface is everything you never dealt with as a child, a lot of childhood trauma, and the things that are on the surface. And so that's what happened when I was broken. What got revealed to me was the stuff that I never dealt with, and a lot of that had to do with childhood trauma. Mm. Father was an alcoholic, correct? And he died when you are about five years old? Yes, sir. So he was not a part of your life, and he had a... You know, that alcohol problem affected the family. So what kind of trauma did you carry into adulthood that you may have buried without even knowing it? Well, and what I didn't know is that not having my biological dad in my life affected me so much, and, and it affected a lot of the decisions. And every young boy and every young girl needs to be affirmed by their daddy yeah. and their mom. And so because I wasn't affirmed, I went out looking for identity. I went out looking for approval. Where's That's the first place you looked for it? Gangs? Gangs, drugs. You know, really gangs. And really what I was seeking wasn't that I wanted to be a gang member. I had a great family. And, and let me say this. I had a great stepfather and I had great men and women in my life. Mm -hmm. But I was never affirmed and I didn't have an identity, so I went creating it. It wasn't that I was looking for community and gangs. What I was looking for was someone to affirm me. So what does the gang life bring to somebody looking for affirmation? Really, I just wanted people to tell me that I was cool. Some people are looking for just... A family, I didn't need that. What I was looking for was people to tell me that I was cool. You know, as a, as a young boy, all my friends thought gangs were cool, so what did I need them to think about me? Is it's that hard I to believe cool. that picture's the same person I'm sitting with right now. Because then you started getting into drugs and alcohol. I sure did. Yeah. I mean, did that start to wreck you? It did. Um, you know, I just, I ended up doing what group, it was groupthink. Yeah. I did the things, what people were doing. Why? Because I needed, I was, I was the class clown. So what, what, I, what I was doing is trying to be a people pleaser so that they can give me their approval. You know, today, today, Andrew, we call it chasing likes, right? Someone will snap yeah. a photo on social media, and that's how they get affirmation. So gang member, doing some drugs, alcohol. How do you wind up in the military? Green Beret, no less. That's pretty impressive. Be I'm here because of evidence of a praying grandmother and the actions of a, <laughs> of a sister that didn't give up on me. I'm here because people gave me tough love. It's my grandmother prayed for me and my sister told me the truth. She said, if you don't get out of here, you're gonna be a loser the rest of your life. I didn't join the military because I was, a, because I was patriotic. I joined the military because I was a loser, addicted to drugs. It did something for you. Two deployments to Afghanistan, one to Iraq, I think. Yes. Green Beret. Yes, sir. Did you find some of that acceptance you were looking for or still empty? Well, I showed up in the military, and finally, it's the men and women that saw the leadership inside of me and began to call it out. I often tell people, the Army didn't make me a Green Beret. What they did is they pulled the Green Beret out of me, right? So my grandmother prayed that into being, and my sister 
pushed it, pushed it, and then the men and women in the military pulled it out of me. And so, but the same thing with being a gang member. Why did I want to be a Green Beret? I wanted to be a Green Beret so, because everybody said, they're cool. So what did I need them to think about me? And it all goes back to being a little boy and never hearing my dad say, I love you and I'm proud of you. So Fort Hood shooting occurs. You battle back physically from all that trauma. And then God begins to reveal you need some emotional healing too, right? So many people watching this show need emotional healing. Some don't know it, some choose to bury it. What's been, I know it's a long journey for you, but if you could summarize, how did you approach this healing process? Well, a lot of it is, is I let people help me. Mm. You know, one of the things is a Green Beret, we don't let people help us. We don't talk to our chaplains, we don't talk to our counselors, uh, we don't talk to our spouses these days. And so I let people help me. But one of the things that really helped me is when I went to pray like David, Lord, search my heart. And when God revealed what the root was, then I was able to deal with it. And so when I actually dealt with my fear and my pain and the, and the root, which was needing to be affirmed. See, I went out looking for a dad until I realized I always had a father. Hmm. Now we could spend a lot of time on Mephibosheth in the Bible. The name may sound familiar to you, but we can only touch on it, you know, a minute or so. But I love the story of Mephibosheth. So do you, why is that? Well, Mephibosheth's a story of, of a man that was royalty, should have, been, should have been the next king of Israel at some point in his life. But because of some unfortunate circumstances where his father and his grandfather are killed, he goes living in wilderness. But he's actually royalty all, all his life. He was and dropped, right? And, he was and dropped left and with became him. crippled. And yeah. so how many of us, Andrew, have been dropped by people who should have cared about us? My dad drank himself to death. I was dropped by the care of my father. And so what happens is he goes and lives in Lodabar, which is, which is the desert, the wasteland. Many of us mentally and emotionally, like myself, have lived in Lodabar, but yet I was royalty. And then it takes the Zebas, it takes the King Davids to call us back to the king's table. And that's what I'm doing. That's what this book is about. It's about going and getting those who are royalty and getting them out of Lodabar and bringing them back to the king's table. And uh, John's book, I Never Heard My Dad Say, explores a lot of these things. For people watching who may be saying, all right, I've got some real trauma to deal with here, but I don't know where to start. I may not even want to face this journey. Can you counsel them in some way? I can. First of all, I just want to tell them that they're going to be okay. I've been through some severe trauma. As long as they get up to face that day, that is victory number one. And then let people help you. Talk with your counselors, talk with your pastors, get people involved and read your Bible. And the other thing I'll say is that they're already loved. They don't, Jesus never had to earn his daddy's love. All he ever had to do is receive it. And when I realized that I didn't have to earn God's love and I already had a father, that healed so much of the pain that was already in my heart. It's remarkable that tough gang member, Green Beret, deployments overseas in war zones, and here to still, your, your heart's touched when you talk about the love of your heavenly father. It's rescued you. Yeah, I mean, because I'm not here right now in this stage. You showed pictures of a boy that, that statistics should have taken him, but I'm here because a father pursued me. See, Andrew, I wasn't walking with God but he was always walking with me. Mm. And that's what people need to know. Jesus didn't shoot me to give me a testimony. He stepped into the middle of it and told me to get up in the middle of when I was bleeding out. Yeah. Thanks for being with us. Really Thank appreciate you so it. Much. There is hope, ladies and gentlemen, there is hope. His book is called, I Never Heard My Dad Say, and it's available nationwide. I really encourage everyone to pick up a copy. It's a remarkable journey John has been through. Thanks again for being with us. Thanks, Andrew.